Welcome. As promised, this is an owner's, paid with their own money, 2,247 mile review of Rummy. My 2024 brand spanking new Royal Enfield Himalayan 450. Now, I've been on a tour I did the first 300 miles, got a serviced, and uh, 25 miles later, I'm jumping on a ferry from Portsmouth across to um, Khan on the 31st of May. From there, we, uh, I was riding with a GS1200 and an 800 Tiger. They kept putting me at the back Mainly, I think, because they couldn't keep up. To say she's awesome, yeah, there's an awful lot I like about this bike. There are a few little things that are niggling me at the moment, and I'll cover those as we go through. But, as a package, she's brilliant. She's capable. She's quick. I mean, I've come down from a multi-strider, when I say quick, in relative terms. However, sitting on the motorway, she's quite happy sitting at 70, 80 miles an hour. You get a little bit of wind buffeting, but that's because of the small screen. It's like riding a naked bike. So if you can imagine riding a naked bike, doing about 70, 80 miles an hour on the motorway, you know what I'm talking about. I think once I'll get a bigger screen on it, that will eliminate that. I mean, it's not too bad. Trust me, it ain't, it ain't that bad. Most of the time we're on the national roads and we're only doing sort of 40, 50, 60 at the most. And she's well capable. Um, so we landed in, in Normandy. Um, we did a couple of days around Normandy, uh, the beaches and stuff like that, before moving on. And we stuck to the... Uh, the national roads across France, come to the top side of Paris to Compiègne. We stayed the night in a hotel in Compiègne and then we went and had a look at the, uh, the train and all the rest of it where they signed the armistice. Then we headed for Baden-Baden uh, um, to do the National 500. The National 500 is one of those classic riding roads in in Germany, in the Black Forest. Lovely, if you ever get a chance to go down and do it, it's nice, it's, it's nice sweeping bends. Yeah, she, amazing handling. Now we did, have a, we did have a drama the first couple of days in the, my fault, I put my hand up to that, my fault. See the saddlebags, I hadn't fitted them properly. I hadn't fitted them high enough. And I'll show you uh, what we've done and what happened. Okay, remember I said about the, um, the saddlebags? Let me just show you them. Right, so they're Oxford, Oxford saddlebags, 50 litres. Um, this is how we've had to set them up, to just try and to lift them up. Now the problem is, you've got this bar here that, um, that gets in the way. So when you're trying to load them, and it's the same on this side here, when you're trying to load them, you've only got a small space to do it. Now if you have a look down here, there's the, uh, <laughs> there's the hole. Let me just come round and show you. That's where it rubbed. So that's the one. Fortunately, there's a, it didn't get the inner bag. This one's not quite so bad, but again, it's it's a poor design. Um, I don't. I think they for some reason they just didn't fit. So I've had to to use all sorts of manner of things to to tie them up with, um, just to get them up in the air. 
um, so they don't rub anymore. It's not an ideal situation. There's one other thing I forgot to mention. Um, at 1200 miles, we had to adjust the chain. The, uh, the chain became rather slack at 1200 miles. So we've had to tighten that up um, because it was slapping about a little bit. But that's the only thing. And then uh, it was fairly easy. The tools were underneath the seat to do it. But other than that, I mean, she's cracking. I mean, she goes really, really well. So, from my perspective, this wasn't a good situation. This, this wasn't a good design. But I couldn't wait for the uh, for the proper panniers to come. We'd we'd had a we'd had the ferry book for for months, and uh, the guys I went with they only had two weeks holiday. Um, from my perspective, it didn't make a lot of difference, but I wanted to start the trip because we wanted to do Normandy just before it all kicked off. So, consequently, they were, they were hanging low, hadn't stiffened the suspension up at all. Didn't think they'd need to, but it did in the end. Um, so it's worn a hole in the bottom of the bags, made them pretty useless. Ideally, I would have liked to started the trip with the accessories on. Um, I've got panniers ordered, I've got a top box ordered, um, I've got a belly pan with crash bars ordered, and I've got a, a taller screen ordered. And um, heated grips. Not so much in this weather, but uh, there had been a couple of occasions when my hands were getting a bit chilly in the mornings. Um, so what what we've looked at doing is, I mean, we, we, we strapped them all up as high as we could get them. We've stiffened the suspension up. Made a nice bit of difference actually to the bike. The handling was good to start with. It's even better. So that's one thing that, that, that I wasn't happy with, the saddlebags. Um, I, I prefer hard panniers personally. Top loaders make life, would have made the trip so much easier, put it that way. And I'll give you a show round of the bike and the how it looks and and the, the problems of stuffing the, the, the inner bags in, uh, the waterproof bags to get in, the, the, it, it, it's a squeeze. You have to really think about what I brought with me on the trip. Fortunately, um, we've been on the road now for 16 days. And I've been able to get my washing done uh, two or three times, which is good, because I've only bought three pair of pants, three pair of socks, <laughs> and a couple of shirts. So, from that perspective. Anyway, back to the bike. Now, the handling I love, the ride, the comfort. Um, it takes two or three hours before your bum starts going numb and you just need a, a sort of five minute stop or 10 minute stop for a coffee. Uh, and that squares that away. Vibration. People sort of say about the vibration of it. Okay, yeah, it's a single. You're gonna get a bit of vibration. The vibration through the handlebars, I haven't really noticed. Um, I've just got normal sort of lightweight gloves with a little bit of padding on the um, on the, the palms, and I haven't noticed my hands going numb or anything like that. On the pegs, again, it's it's where you place your feet. If you put put on your toes, are you going to feel a bit of vibration? when it goes up sort of three, four, five thousand. Um, there is another way of combating that. Put um, skull 
gel insoles in and that eliminates that altogether. But I found it, you, you find a sweet spot um, sort of on the arch of your foot, on the pegs, and you don't notice the, the vibration at all. Another thing, uh, one thing that really is starting to niggle me a bit is the trying to reset the trip when you fill up. Sometimes it'll reset, sometimes it won't. I haven't worked out exactly how it resets and it's, it's niggling me a little bit. But I'll have to have a look at the book when I get it. <laughs> Because the bike is so new, I was the first customer to get it from uh, Bulba Lawn at um, Brockenhurst. And literally, I had it a, a couple of days, I had to do 300 miles on it, took it back in for its first service, and then I was pretty much away on this trip. This, is, this trip's lasting, um, I should get back into the UK, about the 25th. She's back in Bournemouth Lawns on the 26th, hopefully to have the accessories fitted, ready to go away on the 27th again to the Adventure Bike Riders Festival up at um, Ragley Hall in Warwickshire. So she's hopefully by then she'll be fully sorted. So other than the... oh. Now, I've tried using the, um, my phone as a sat-nav. Works okay. You, you put it in digital mode, set it up, and um, the downside of doing that is that it eats the battery on your phone. For some reason, it's power-hungry when it's using the navigation system. There is a way of combating it. You need a USB-C to lightning cable, plug it into the bike, plug it into your phone, stuff it in your pocket. It's not a do, you've got a wire flapping around, but it, it charges your battery, charges your phone up while you're underway. What else can I say about a bike? She's great. I mean, she really is capable. She chugs along quite happily at sort of at 60 mile an hour at 5,000 revs. Wind her up to sort of 75 at, at, at 6,000 revs and she'll just sit there. Fuel economy. Now, I said I was running with a 1200 GS and a, uh, an 800 Tiger. Now, I was using far less fuel than those two. They were stopping twice as often as me. I'm currently getting a little over 200 miles out of the tank. And when I fill up, fill up I don't know whether it's, it's... It's only got sort of about 50 miles left. And uh, I need to fill up. But when I fill up, I'm only sticking in about 10 litres, so I've still got about 7 litres left in it. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure how it all works. But, uh, err on the side of caution, when it gets down saying, oh, I need some gas, stick it in. But she's doing about 200 mile before she's needing to, uh, to fill up. Okay, yeah, yeah, so I'm just, just finishing up, give me one second. So, there you go, that's the owner's review at 2,250 miles. So if you've got any questions, stick in the comments. Let me know what you think. But that's... That's from a perspective, I spent my own money on it. Um, it's not gifted by anybody. I, I took the decision to downside from a 1200 Multistrada. 
Um, a few reasons behind that. Not getting any younger, and I struggled last year on the tour. I did a tour down to France and Spain last year, and I had a couple of moments where I nearly dropped it. Um, she was getting a bit heavy. This one, all right, she's 200 kilos, with a full tank of fuel, uh, and all the bags and everything on the back. Just takes a little bit of a wick to get her up. But once she's underway, she's, she's terrific. She really does handle well. So that's it for me. Got any questions for me, bang in and I'll do me what's it and I'll uh, do my best to, to answer it. So from me, in Berlin. There you go, I'm in Berlin. And I've got the, uh, the Lone Rider Moto tent. And, and Rummy, she's parked inside. Anyway, thanks for your time. Let me know what you think. Smash the like button, etc, etc, etc. That's my rider's review, or owner's review, um, of the Royal Enfield Himalayan 450. If you're in two minds whether to get one, I'd say go for it. You won't regret it. I haven't had a much off-road yet, but there again, I'm not an off-road rider. I'm a, I'm a tourer and an ex-racer, so I used to do a little bit of racing. But that's it. And the, uh, the old Lone Rider, <laughs> Lone Rider Moto Tent, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great bit of kit. Really is. Look, got the awning up and everything. So, uh, and that's what uh, you park your bike in. <laughs> so, so, the Lone Rider Moto Tent. You can't fault it. See it at the, uh, the Adventure Bike Riders Festival at the end of the month. So until then, TTFN, ta-ta for now.